Hey there everyone, welcome back. I wanted to make a quick video uh, showing you guys where the quote unquote little g comes from, right? The local acceleration due to gravity. Um, up until now, throughout the entire course, well pretty much since at least chapter four, maybe even since chapter two, um, we've always talked about the force of gravity being mass times little g, right? Mg. Well, that's kind of half the truth. So I've been halfway lying to you or, or really haven't been telling you the entire truth yet, right? Well, that was because we haven't gotten to chapter 13 until now. So let's, let me show you where it comes from, right? If you can imagine there's some person standing on the ground, right? And they throw an object up, right? They, they create some a projectile, if you will. So it has some initial velocity and then either it goes straight up or it arcs, it doesn't matter, right? The, the key is that it's in the air, right? So it's changing height. Specifically, it's delta V, the change in velocity is decreasing, right? Up into a maximum height when the speed is zero, right? Because we have a negative delta V, uh, let's see, that that vector is upwards, that means we have to have a negative acceleration, right? Or an acceleration downwards in this case. So we have downwards here, we have that acceleration. Can you guess what the magnitude of that acceleration is? If you said 9.81 meters per second squared, you'd be right, right? The magnitude is g, and it's in the negative direction. So I guess if you wanted to put a, actually a negative g, that'd be the most precise, okay? So up until now, this is nothing new. Actually, I should draw the actual mass, right? It's a baseball, it's a can of sardines, whatever you want to call it, okay? So what are the forces on this? Well, there's always the gravitational force. And even at, as that moves upwards, right, the force is downwards, okay? Um, I'm going, going to ignore air resistance, of course, okay? Uh, now, up until this point, we've only called the force of gravity here mg. But now that you know Newton's universal law of gravitation, you know that it's not quite mg, right? So when it's in the air, that's the only force on it. So now we can write out the second law equation, right? The net forces on it. Well, if it's in the air, it's just the force of gravity. I'll leave it as a magnitude. And it's equal to the net force of mass times the net acceleration, okay? So now that we know Newton's law of gravity, we can write this as g mm over r squared, okay? So I'm going to leave this as m1 and m2 over some distance between one and two squared. And that's equal to the mass of the object that's accelerating. Well, in this case, I didn't write it, it's of mass m. Um, it doesn't matter, well, let's call that mass two. So in this case, that would be the mass two that's doing the accelerating, and the magnitude of that is g, but I'll just leave it as a for right now, okay? So, from here, we can see that the mass of that object, mass of that baseball or sardine can, cancels out. And that leaves us with g times m1 over r squared, 1, 2 squared, equals a, okay? Now question, what is this m1? What's this other mass? Right? Newton says that the force of gravity depends linearly, right, directly proportional to the mass of both objects. Well, we have the mass of that baseball. The other object is the Earth. The Earth is creating this force of gravity that's pointing downwards. Right? It's the attractive force that's, I keep saying downwards, but really that force of gravity is pointing towards the center of mass of the Earth. Okay, so let me rewrite this M1 as actually mass of the Earth. And I can rewrite the R12 also. 
that's mass of Earth, okay? Now we need to take a look at what's the, the distance here, r, between that baseball and the Earth, okay? Well, to do that, I need to actually take away this picture, and we're going to zoom way, way out such that we have the Earth completely in our diagram here. And it's of some radius, right? And if we zoomed out and some person threw a baseball, the height that the baseball was thrown directly upwards would barely be the height of the, the marking I made, right? It'd be, it'd be so, so, so small. You wouldn't even see it at this scale, right? So really the height, the delta H that the ball increased above the surface of the Earth pales in comparison to the radius of the Earth, right? So when technically the distance R is, well, the radius of the Earth plus the delta H that it was thrown above the surface, well, this here is basically zero compared to the radius of the Earth. So because of that, I'm just going to write the distance between the two is pretty much the radius of the Earth squared, okay? And so now, I'm gonna switch sides here. This acceleration is the gravitational constant, capital G, times the mass of the Earth over the radius of the Earth squared. And so if you plug in these values, 6.66 times 10 to the minus 11 Newton meters squared per kilogram squared. Um, this value, by the way, uh, comes from the force of gravity between two one kilogram objects separated by one meter. All right? Fun fact. And that was actually experimentally determined in the late 1700s by a guy named Cavendish. All right, if you look up his experiment, it'll show that he experimentally determined the force of gravity, or rather the, the gravitational acceleration, the gravitational constant, G, sorry. It's quite an incredible achievement, especially for the time. All right, the mass of Earth, about 6 times 10 to the 24, whoops, forgot units, kilograms. The radius of the Earth is pretty close to 6.4 million meters. All right. Now, I want you to plug in these numbers in your calculator, right? Get this under your fingers so you can see for yourself what the value is, right? You've known all, all along what it is, but I want you to physically calculate it. Pause, pause this video right now and do it, okay? You should get pretty darn close to 9.8 meters per second squared. And this, A, is what we call g, or more specifically, little g, the local acceleration due to gravity. And this value of 9.81 is specific to the Earth, right? It's specific to the Earth having its characteristic mass and its characteristic radius, right? This little g will be different for the moon, right? If astronauts were to th uh, throw a ball up on the moon's surface. And in fact, I think it was Apollo 16 or Apollo 17 that they actually hit golf balls on, on, on the moon, right, to help determine that local acceleration due to gravity, okay? The moon's mass is about one-sixth uh, that of Earth's, and the radius escapes me at the second, but it's much less than Earth's local acceleration, right? Because it's, it's much less massive and it's smaller, right? If you were to do this calculation on, say, Jupiter, right, or Mars, it'd be a totally different value. But it all depends on the mass of the planet and the radius of that planet, okay? So that's how we get little g.